Hi everyone, um, this is Chauke speaking, um, an instructor at Majuba Tivet College. Okay, so today I'll be taking you through building and structural construction N5 and be looking at the topic bold connections and our video will be part one. Okay, we'll be referencing to this book by J. Bishop here. Yeah. So now, what is stress? But before we look at that, bold connection has got a potential of failing due to stress. All right. So what is stress? Stress is force per unit area or force over area. So if you increase the force, you will be increasing the stress. However, if we increase the area, we'll be decreasing the stress. All right. So our connection will be subjected to three stresses at the same time, which are shear stress, bearing stress, as well as tensile stress. So these three stress stresses are differentiated by the position of action or the stressed area. Simply meaning where the stress is taking place. Okay? So, but for this um, lesson, we will only going to be looking at shear stress. So, shear stress. If you look at this diagram here, you, you will see that we have two ties, all right, or two members then, which are subject to this force and that force, all right? And these two members are connected uh, by means of a bolt. You can also see it there. So if it happens that our bolt is weak, what is going to happen is that our connection is going to fail through shared bolt. So our bolt is going to shear through that red line there, all right? So it's going to shear across its circumference. So you can also see this is a stressed area. So meaning that, that that's the potential area which is going to shear, okay? So at the same time, this kind of a, a connection, we call it lap joint because of this lap or overlapping here. Okay, and they're dire directly connected to each other. And we call it single shear. Why? Because our bolt is going to shear once. Okay, our bolt is going to shear once there. Okay, so we call it shear or single shear. All right, so this is a general formula for uh, stress. Okay, so uh, shear stress is equal to force over the area. Which area is being um, stressed? It is that um, circular area there that I showed you. Pi d squared over 4. Okay, now let's look at this. So F is the load. N is the number of bolts. Okay, and then D it is the diameter of bolt. Okay, you'll notice these two diagrams here. The first diagram, it is a bolt which is partially threaded. Okay, and then we have another bolt which is threaded throughout. All right, so in our book, all the examples are based on the assumption that our connections are using this bolt, which is partially threaded, meaning that when it comes to shear, shearing is going to take place where there are no threads. However, the examiner is not limited to asking questions based on this assumption. All right, so that is why we're also going to look at this one as well. What happens 
if or when our bolt is connected using this um, bolt which is threaded throughout okay so now if we go to an example just to look at um, everything here this example now it is based on what single shear all right and the assumption is that the threads of the bolt are outside the shearing plane okay outside the shearing plane so meaning that it is this assumption here the threads are outside the shearing plane so the shearing plane is that one there okay where there are no threads okay so now we have discussed this formula all right so it is subjected to this force here 100 kilonewtons okay also 100 kilonewtons on the other side and we are given that the size of the bolt is two is, is 20 millimeters and the size of the hole is 22 millimeters you will understand that the size of the hole will always be two millimeters more than the size of the bolt okay so if we take what we have uh, and substitute it to the formula force we have which is 100 kilonewtons but we convert it to newtons by multiplying it by 1000 all right that is why we have 10 to the power 3 there all over n n number of volt how many do we have got one two three four hence we have four there multiply by pi multiply by 20 what is 20 is the size of our bolt all right over four and then that will give us 79,58 MPa. Okay, so this is our shear stress. If we go back to our second example, our example here, it is still going to be single shear, okay, meaning that our ball is going to be sheared once. However, now the threads of the ball are inside the shearing plane. This simply means that the ball that we're going to be using is the one which is threaded throughout. Okay. So, let us look at the implication there. The implication is that the formula will be modified a little bit. We still have F over N multiplied by pi into D, all right, minus 0, 0.9382. Uh, this symbol there representing the pitch all right into square so that's your pitch all right over four so it is the same example okay where we've got 100 kilonewtons first where we've got 20 uh, millimeter diameter of a bolt where we have got 22 millimeter uh, size of the hole and then we are given that the pitch is gonna be two millimeters so what's the pitch pitch is the distance in between the threads all right so that is our pitch distance so if we take all that we are given to the formula is the formula all right so f we are given you remember is 100 okay multiply by 10 to the power 3 to, to convert it to newtons all over 4 pi into the diameter of a bolt is 20 right minus 0, 0,9382 multiplied by 2. We're given that the pitch is 2 millimeters. And then into, uh, we close the bracket, I mean, and then squared there. All over 4. All right? And then that gives us 87,604 MPa. So that is our stress. So I want you to notice something here. Let's go back. For this scenario where the stress is taking place outside or where there are no threads, we're getting 79, which is less than this one where our bolt is fully threaded. This simply means that the bolt which is partially threaded is more stronger than this one, which is fully threaded. All right? So, there's an implication there. 
So if we continue, we have another scenario still on sharing. This is the second type of a connection. The first type was a lip, uh, the, the first type was a lab joint, you remember? But this time around, we're gonna be dealing with what? Bad joint. Alright. So what's bad joint? If you can look at um this picture here, you've got a member here, and you've got a member. So you can see that they are not directly connected to each other, but they are connected to each other by means of what? Two connector plates. You can see here. So this bolt is connecting this plate, the member, and the plate. And this bolt is connecting this, this plate, the member, and the other plate. So you can see that this bolt has got nothing to do with this member here. And this bolt, again, has got nothing to do with the other member here. All right. So another nice example uh, it's here. If you can look at these two beams are connected to are connected together by means of these two plates here. All right. So these four bolts here have got nothing to do with this member, if you can see. And these two and and these four members uh, or bolts here, they have got nothing to do with this uh, beam here. Okay. So that's where the bad joint name comes from. All right. So now, why is it the double, why is the double shear? If we can look at um, our the sharing uh, plane there, all right, or the stressed area there, you can see that if our 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 bolt uh, is weaker, all right. Let's say our bolt is weaker. What's going to happen here is that. Um, our bolt is going to shear twice. Oh, it's going to shear here and as well as there. If you look at these red areas uh, or lines there, all right, that is a shearing uh, position. It's going to shear there and it's going to shear there. Hence, double shear. So it's going to shear twice. All right. So now the modification is that we are going to multiply the area by two. Why? Because we've got two areas which are going to shear. All right. That's about it. So let's look at um, an example here. Right. So we've got these two connector plates again, or, uh, or ties, uh, joining a uh, or Join, joining these two or joined by these two connector plates here. All right. So then now, if you can look at um, our example, these three bolts are the ones which are connecting this plate, this tie, and that plate. And then on the other side, you've got three bolts again which are connecting this plate, um, that tie, and that plate again. Okay. All right. So uh, this connection is subject to 120 kilonewtons and also 120 kilonewtons on the other side. All right. So we are given the diameter to be 20. But this time around, we are not given a bolt. The diameter of a rivet. All right. And this side, we are also told that the size of the hole will be 22. All right. So you have to take note of this. So there is, there, is a, there is a rivet. It's no longer a bolt here. All right. So a rivet could be used where we've got a single shear or double shear. I'm just using a rivet here just to demonstrate um, something. So now, if you look at our formula here, it is the same. However, we're going to multiply by 2. Why? Because it's a double share. We're going to share somewhere there. And we're going to have sharing somewhere there. Alright. So hence, we multiply, by, we multiply the error by 2. Okay. So, let's look at what we have. So, first we do have, which is 120, multiplied by 10 to the power 3, newtons. I need. So, all over uh, 2 
multiply by what is n remember 2 is for double share and then n it is 3 all right what's happening now because here we've got six bolts it is because these bolts here have got nothing to do with the member this side all right so again these bolts here have got nothing to do or are not, are not directly connected to this member on the other side so this member is on its own and this member is on its own or maybe this member is connected by this three bolt and this member is connected by this three bolt so hence we are taking three as our number of bolts not six take note of that so this is the implication of what of a bad joint okay and then times pi times 22 what because the size is 20 it is because we are using a rivet not a bolt okay what's happening here is that the rivet when it displays is going to be 20 however it's going to be heated and when it's heated it's going to expand to the size of the hole to get that grip and then after that it's going to be hammered by a special hammer there all right this side okay so now as i said when it's heated it's going to expand to the size of a hole meaning that now when it is subjected to this force it is no longer this this uh, rivet size 20 which is going to be subjected to this uh, force meaning that it is now no longer 20 which is subjected to a stress okay so it is going to be the 22 rivet which has expanded which is going to be stressed now all right so be careful to check to look out whether you're given a bolt or a rivet if it's a rivet use the size of a hole because it will have expanded to the size of a hole now which is 22 and then we square it over 4 and then now when you calculate the answer is 52,61 so that's about it I hope you have learned something. Thank you.